I want to present a poem. I try to try to think of a way to um, dedicate it, let's say, to, to someone. So I want to dedicate this to our guides. And you all know how uh, terrific the food has been. Our whole trip, it's been wonderful, excellent. This little story is directed to the guides and it may be considered a warning about what might happen should you run out of food <laughs> in your next group. Okay? All right. Now, as a helper, I'll ask Tim to help me out. Okay? <laughs> We've never done this as a team before, but we'll try it. All right? <laughs> Bear with us. So it's on the shore, the round this coast, from Deals to Ramsgate Spat, that I spied alone on a piece of stone in the elderly naval man. And his hair was long, and his beard was wee. And, well, weedy and long was he. And I heard this wife on a shore recite in a singular minor key. For I am a cook and a captain bold and a mate of the Nancy Brig and a bosun tight and a midship might and a crew of the captain's gig. And he shook his fists and he tore his hair. So I really was afraid. For I couldn't help thinking this chap had been drinking. So I simply said, Good sir, tell us little I men I know of the men of the sea. But I'll eat my hand if I understand how at once you could possibly be. A cook and a captain bold, and the mate of the Nancy Brig, and a bosun tight, and a midship mine, and a crew of the captain's gig. And having give a hitch to his trousers, which is a trick all seamen learn, got rid of his thumping quid, he spun this painful yarn. Was on the good ship Nancy Bell, where we sailed to the Indian Sea, and there on a reef we come to grief, which has oft occurred to me, and pretty nigh all the crew was drowned. There were seventy-seven a soul, and only ten of the Manc Nancy's men cried here to the muster's roll. There was me and the cook and the captain bold, and the mate of the Nancy brig, and a bosun tight, and a midship might, and the crew with the captain's gig. For a month, we'd nary victuals nor drink, <laughs> till a hungry we did feel. So uh, we accordingly drew a lot and shot the captain for our meal. The next lot fell to the Nancy's mate, and a delicate dish he made. <laughs> then our appetites with the midship might, we seven survivors stayed. And next we murdered the bosun, and he much resembled a pig. Then we whittled free, did the cook and me on the crew of the captain's gig. And then there was only the cook and me. And the delicate question, which of the two of us goes in the kettle arose, and we argued it out as such. For I loved that cook as a brother I did, and the cook he worshipped me, but we'd both be blowed if we'd either be stowed in the other chap's hole, do you see? <laughs> I'll be plain eat if you dines off me, says I. Says Tom, yes, that says I, you I'm fancy boiled if I die, my friend, quoth I, and exactly so, quoth he. Dear James, he says, to murder me, twere a foolish thing to do, 
For don't you see that you can't cook me while I can and will cook you? <laughs> then he boils some water and adds the salt and pepper in portions true, which he never forgot, and some chopped shallot, and some sage and parsley too. Come here, says he, with proper pride, as smiling features tell. Twill soothing be if I let you see how extremely nice you'll smell. And he stirred it round and round and round, and he sniffed at the foaming froth, when I ups his heels and smothers his squeals in the scum of the boiling broth. And I eat that cook in a week or so, and as I eating be, the last of his chops, why, I almost drops for a vessel in sight, I see. And I never smile, and I never laugh, and I never lock no play, but I sit and croak at a single joke I have, which is to say, oh, I am a cook, and a captain bold, and a mate to the Nancy Brig. And a bosun tight, and a midship might, and a crew with a captain's gig. <laughs>